Hi, welcome to the channel. So, um, what have I been doing in the last few months? So, I decided to start a Napoleonic army. Now, this is really um, unusual for me because this is the first time I've ever got into this period. As you know from watching the channel, I played lots of different periods, painted up armies for lots of different periods ECW, Wars of the Roses, um, Franco Prussian War. I've even got a um, an army of Romans, an army of Gauls as well. So quite a lot of different periods, plus a couple of fantasy periods as well. So um, this is a bit of a departure from me, and it's the first time I've ever painted a um, Napoleonic army. But uh, after watching uh, Tim Richardson's channel, um, the Napoleonic Wargamer, um, I noticed that he was running an event in Derby at Boards and Swords. He's running an event called Under Eagles to Glory in June. And I thought, well, this is my opportunity now to, you know, paint an army and you know you, you need that little deadline don't you sometimes to kind of get you kind of motivated and you get you doing something so i'd already bought a uh, austrian army from um piano miniatures um a few uh, well last year about a year ago and uh well i, I got it as part of the uh, alps of flame kickstarter so i've got a tyrolean uh, rebels i've got an austrian army and i've got a bavarian army not a huge amount, but uh, enough to kind of get started. And I thought, well, I've got the figures, let's get into it. Now, I'd always been a bit wary of uh, Napoleonics, you know, with all the uniforms and the tassels and the braiding and all that kind of stuff. But also, you know, getting the colours right as well, because I'm not, I don't, I, you know, I'm not one of these people who cares massively about historical accuracy, but I do like to get the uniforms right. So for bolt action, for example, when we play bolt action, we don't care about mid, late and um, uh, early war. We don't bother about those sorts of things. We just use points. But, you know, I like my Americans to look like Americans. So pretty similar to Napoleonics, really. I'm, you know, I'm trying to keep it as accurate as I can, but not <laughs> going down that pathway of, you know, it's got to be super accurate, otherwise I won't play the army. So we'll see what um, I've come up with so far. So I did do a little bit of research into this. So these are mostly Napoleonic, uh, mostly piano miniatures. Um, I've got, uh, as you see, I've got some command stands. I've got a, a piece of artillery so far, and I've got some infantry as well. So I'll let you take a look. I'll show you through them uh, and work you through them as as we go. So so far, um, I've got a uh, a line regiment. So if I just bring this guy up. So I've decided to put them in movement bases to start with, um, but I could put them into fours. Now, Tim's event is using black powder, so I could put them in groups of four in that way, but I want to kind of keep it a bit flexible at the minute. I'm not, I don't want to kind of restrict myself into uh, certain base configurations because I've done that so many times I've had to change the bases so here's the kind of command unit for the uh, battalion so these guys these are the uh, Kaiser Franz Mora uh, Moravians um, now in pretty much in the Austrian army anybody who's not Hungarian is considered Austrian um, and the Moravians are part of the Austrian Empire and uh, they have dark red as their facings colors okay and with the with the Austrian uh, flag there okay the uh, the ordinary flag the uh, Oberfane okay uh, which is the ordinary flag for the Austrian army so there you go there's uh, the uh, the line so far now you'll notice the helmets they're wearing again done a little bit of research on this and the helmets really were uh, the early Austrian army up until about 1809 now they started to um, phase them out about 1805 1806 and obviously they started wearing the Shaco, um, or Shaco, depending on your pronunciation. And um, basically by 1809, the Shaco was in full use. And probably one of, you know, a few might have still been wearing the helmet, but it was pretty much phased out by 1809. So I can still use these up to about 1809. And I do want that level of historical accuracy, you know. But as I say again, how many times am I going to play a historically accurate game? Probably never, okay, <laughs> unless I maybe play the the Danube campaign or something like that um um and possibly play them then um obviously uh, uh the event of boards and swords under uh, eagles to glory is not historically accurate tim's pretty easy going with uh, what you bring along and what you play against with uh, your uh, opponents so there's my line troops so far so i'm quite pleased 
with the way, way it came out. As I say, piano miniatures, absolutely superb figures. And to be honest, can I do them justice with my painting? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, so I've got a piece of artillery. Okay, now I'm not sure. I think they used uh, nine pounders. Okay, it could be a six pounder. Okay, gun. But I'm quite pleased with the way they came out. This is a Austrian gun. So I've got two of these. I've got another one that I need to paint up as well because I don't like just having one gun on the field. I like a nice battery. Okay, um, so a couple of guns either side by side or belonging to um, a battalion each would be quite nice. Okay, so hope you get a good look at that. That's my uh, that's my Austrian gun. And because these these miniatures are so good, they're just an absolute pleasure to paint. And there's no hardship in painting such beautiful figures. You know, I, I, I just look painting them. <laughs> okay. Um, then I've got um, some command. Okay, so these are going to be my battalion commanders. Um, I've forgotten the name of the guy on the left. He is one of the uh, dukes. Okay. Um, I could probably quickly look him up in a second for you. And then on the right, we've got a infantry commander. Um, so he'll be my battalion commander for my for the uh, Kaiser Franz's uh, Moravians. Um, and uh, then this guy will probably be a battalion commander. Possibly use him for my Hungarians. So I'm going to paint up some Hungarians as well and use him for those. He's actually a named commander. So Okay, so two... Um, battalion commanders yeah. Oops. okay and uh, also done um, Archduke Charles as well who will be my CNC okay Archduke Charles he will be my army commander um, for the Austrians probably the best commander that the Austrians ever had apparently really kind of reshaped the army and their tactics so he will be my um, my CNC my commander in chief. Okay, now put him on a wide base because I'm going to put another um, horseback um, next to him, maybe uh, an ADC that he is giving an order to. Okay, so I'm going to put that guy next to him so this becomes a command, my overall army command base. Okay, don't get too close, Matt. It's... Okay, my pa my painting isn't perfect. Okay, nowhere near as good as the um, the pictures on the. Uh, um, piano miniatures website finally I have started but not got very far with so far um, some grenadiers okay these guys are the um, just quickly look them up I think they are the um, Graf Michael Wallace okay um, and uh, they change later as well but at the moment that's who they are now i was reading up about the grenadiers because i wasn't sure what what kind of how they kind of work within the army so as i say i'm completely new to napoleonics and to uh, the austrians in particular so i did find out that the grenadiers actually the grenadier battalions were made up from different regiments so at the minute i'm kind of painting these guys up with pink facings um uh, but i will add i'm probably going to do two because I'm going to put 30 men, which is you can probably see from the back there. I'm going to put 30 men in a battalion, okay? Because the um, Austrians had quite large battalions compared to other armies. So 30 men in a battalion. So if I do um, 15 of these in for one regiment and 15 for another regiment, okay, with a different colour facings, then that will become a, a grenadier battalion. Now, I think the problems that the Austrians had was because they all spoke different languages, the, the command and control was quite difficult for them. So, and that's reflected in the Black Powder rules through their, the orders that they give. So, I think, I'm not sure, but I think if I put in three regiments into a grenadier battalion, I might be making things even more difficult to, for myself. So, I think two regiments in a grenadier battalion will be enough. These are Victrix, okay. Um, I I'm not 100% one Victrix ones. They're they're a bit chunky looking. The faces are a bit weird looking, aren't they? With the kind of <laughs> giant noses. I'm not, I don't know what's going on there. Um, and they're not as kind of um, um, proportioned as the piano miniatures. So these are plastics. 
Victrix, I love Victrix. I'm not gonna. I want to hear a word against them. Okay, all my Romans, all my Gauls are Victrix. I've even got um, a uh, box full of um, uh, Persians and Greeks as well that I've got to get around to at some point. I, and I love Victrix, but in this case, I probably won't go with them again. Okay, because I think they're quite a bit older. These models. Okay. So what? That's where I am at the minute. So a couple of command, a couple of um, regimental command, uh, brigadier, a uh, couple of um, brigadiers. Yeah, a couple of brigade commanders. My CNC, um, a artillery piece, and uh, one battalion so far of line. Now I've got to get a, a six hundred point army painted by um, I think it's twenty first, twenty second of June. I can't see a problem with that. I'm a pretty fast painter, <laughs> okay, and I I really really enjoy painting these. So, um, and also Austrians. I mean, it's white, isn't it? I mean, how how hard is it? So <laughs> getting it done should be easy. Um, what I'm working on next? Well, my next part of this is my Hungarians. I've got some Hungarians from Piano Miniatures, and as soon as I paint up a battalion of those, I'll look date you and I will show you those. And the Hungarians are absolutely beautiful as well a little bit more modern a little bit further along the kind of um pathway than the uh, than the austrians in, in this case because uh, they've got the shakos on uh, and they've got the short tunics on so they look like a more modern napoleonic army i've also got a second artillery piece um i'm just going to finish off those grenadiers and then i kind of need to think where i'm going to go next because i'm probably going to need some cavalry so it needs to get some cavalry, probably from Perry's, and see where we go from there. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. So, uh, the uh, my Hungarians are going to be the um, Ertz, Ertz Herzog Ferdinand, okay, a regiment, okay. Um, they're going to be my Hungarians to go alongside my fir my, uh, my first battalion of. Um, Austrians. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed seeing where I am at the moment, watching a new project begin, the very starting point of someone getting into Napoleonics. If you've got any interesting comments in the uh, in the comment section, please let me know. Please give me any advice that you can. If you're a, a really a Napoleonic player and you've got an Austrian army, I'll be pleased to hear from you. And uh, this is the start of a journey for me, which is probably going to take you know obviously a few, three or four months before I get to uh, Boards and Swords. Um, and maybe even after that, I might even start a French army. Okay, I've got a, I've got Bavarians. I could start a Bavarian army, to be honest, and to fight the Austrians. So, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, I know I haven't posted for a while. I'm not sure why. I have been painting like mad. I've, I've, I'm not stopped painting. Um, so I've got lots to kind of catch up with. Um, and so please like and subscribe and then you can kind of follow my journey down the rabbit hole of uh, Napoleonic warfare.